In the early 19th century, a revolution took place that changed the methods of industrial production. The shift was made from handcraft to industrial mass production thanks to the innovative genius of Henry Ford. The concepts introduced by Ford divided labor into standard single tasks. This was done in order to reduce the need for employee training. Production lines were established to reduce the time used to transport semi-finished components. And the new machines performed only one type of task. The primary objective was to reduce the dependency of unskilled workers as far as possible. In this way, financial benefits were materialized and the cost per unit for automobiles fell considerably. At the same time, a new class of workers was formed. They carried out simple and repeated work tasks. These tasks required minimal levels of knowledge and were not very challenging for the workforce. The result was that the automobile companies came to regard labor as a variable cost. The labor component could easily be increased or reduced on short notice. One was then able to fit the use of labor according to changes in demand. This required access to a large pool of unskilled labor, something that the USA had in abundance up until the time of the Great Depression in the 1930s. This would prove to be a formidable challenge for Henry Ford. However, this new trend in industrial operation was not entirely a benefit. One challenge was the fact that the work methods were largely inflexible, since a machine could only be used for one task. This led to a situation where the customer's freedom of choice and their wishes regarding to the end product were not given any special consideration something best described in the famous quotation by Henry Ford. Any customer can have a car painted in any color he wants, as long as it's black. Henry Ford was obliged to produce a limited amount of automobile types in great numbers in order to keep his unit costs low. This meant that it was not possible to adapt automobiles to a market that at an increasing pace wanted automobiles that met a variety of different needs. Last but not least, mass production had a huge problem with quality. In all the stages in production, products were manufactured in large batches to ensure maximum utilization of manufacturing equipment. The downside was that if a defect occurred, it usually was not discovered until after a large number of components with exactly the same error had already been produced. In addition, there was a risk that a defective product could be sent further down the line and built into assembled consumer products. The mass production solution to this problem was to have workers mobilized at the end of the production line who did only one thing, repair brand new cars. A considerable amount of time was spent in fixing defects that should not have occurred in the first place. A situation that was wasteful and very costly. These were the problems that Toyota captured and learned from visiting Ford plants in the United States. Toyota's automobile production picked up in speed in Japan after World War II. At this time, the domestic market was small and fragmented. Workers resisted being regarded as only a variable cost, as there were enough employment for everybody and there was a complete lack of capital to purchase Western technology. Something had to be done in a different way. This mindset characterized Toyota's development and production in many areas, and the result was what we know today as the Toyota production system. The tremendous forward movement with focus on quality, efficiency and elimination of waste got noticed in the United States 
especially among the major automobile manufacturers in the mid-1980s. The automobile industry in the West realized it was beaten in all disciplines of industrial operations. Hence, a major academic and practical study was initiated with Massachusetts Institute of Technology as a partner. It aimed at learning from the Japanese automobile industry and especially from Toyota.